Hi, and welcome back. Well, now we will be talking about non-specific PCR products that can accumulate during a reaction. So typically, in addition to your uh, primers, you will see additional bands throughout the gel. That's something that you will find in your positive control. And sometimes these bands are so numerous that they will actually form a smear across your gel. And something similar may happen in your sample, maybe the same, maybe different bands. Uh, typically you won't see too much of that in your negative control, at least if it's a water control, uh, then you won't really see that. So that's the typical appearance of non-specific PCR products, meaning that some templates have been amplified, although you didn't mean to amplify them, and although they show only a limited uh, similarity to your primer. So typically you get something like that. This is your template and uh, what you really wanted to do is to have your primer bind perfectly here and bind perfectly here and this would then result in a PCR product to be amplified. Instead what you get and what you get on top of that is that primers would anneal elsewhere so they might be annealing here even if there is only limited uh, homology between your primers and, um, or, and the template or only limited uh, complementarity but even that would then once it's being amplified be sufficient because remember what will happen if that upper PCR product. Let this be the primer again and this let this be uh, the elongation again. If that is now being amplified again, if the primer still would bind here, and if the synthesis goes like that, what you will now get is perfect complementarity because the PCR product is now being synthesized in that area, is now being synthesized according to the first primer. So during the subsequent amplifications, this will now be amplified. This will now serve as a perfect template for a new primer and the polymerization will then go on efficiently. And that's how you quickly transform a non-specific PCR product into something that can bind your primers very specifically and just as efficiently as the template that you were originally trying to amplify. That's why this is so dangerous and that's why you need to avoid non-specific priming. So how can you do that? How can you avoid non-specific priming? Well, first of all, the answer is less is more. You want less template. And I mean temp total template DNA. So try not to use more than say 10 or 20 nanograms in a typical uh, PCR. If you use more DNA, uh, you are likely to uh, pick up more non-specific primer binding sites. It's just a matter of the concentration. You also might want to try less primers. Because that again, even low affinity binding is enhanced by higher concentrations of the single components. So, on top of that, looking at your primers, you might want to avoid too much GC content because Gs and Cs happen to hybridize by three hydrogen bonds, so they would bind more efficiently even to non-specific targets. And that's why you want to try less Gs and Cs in your primers, so typically 50%, maybe 60%, but really not more of a GC content is about right. So that's the simple stuff that you can do. Less is more. What if that wouldn't work? Well, then you need to play around with the annealing temperature. So the annealing temperature might simply be too low. So what you could try 
try is a higher temperature. Try a higher temperature for annealing because then the non-specific bindings are less likely to, to occur. They are being blown apart by the higher temperature. Okay, but you might say, yes, if I use a higher temperature, that's fine, but maybe then even my specific binding may not occur and I might still not get the PCR product that I want. That's very valid if you use a too high annealing temperature. Um, as we have heard in the earlier lectures, you might not get any PCR product whatsoever. Huh. So, what can you do instead? Well, you can try many temperatures, of course. You can even, if your PCR machine allows you, you can run a temperature gradient. That's all perfectly fine. But if you want to get a PCR product quick, maybe you try something that they call a touchdown PCR. Touch down PCR. So what is that? Well, if this is again your temperature, in the heating block and if this is the time. Now for touchdown PCR you typically start with a 95 degree step where the strands get separated. Then you go down to a fairly high annealing temperature. Maybe you start with as high as 70 degrees Celsius which is pretty much the polymerization temperature you use. So you don't need to raise the temperature a whole lot for polymerization. Maybe you don't even do that at all. Then during, then you continue with the denaturation, but then you continue with a slightly lower temperature for annealing. Again, polymerization, denaturation. Then again, you lower the annealing temperature, but just a little bit. Maybe now we are with like, uh, I don't know, 66 degrees. Polymerization, denaturation, still slightly lower annealing temperature, and so on and so forth, until you're down to something like 55 degrees. Something like that, 55 degrees, and that's your final annealing temperature. From there on you just keep the annealing temperature and the polymerization temperature always the same like that and you finish your PCR for a total of uh, some, I don't know, uh, 40 cycles total. So what you really do is you uh, use some 15 cycles for the touchdown as we call it. Now you realize why it's touchdown, right? It's touched down because you lower the temperature for annealing each and every time and after 15 cycles or so you have reached a reasonably low temperature and that uh, will um, and then you just keep going for another 20 cycles or so. So what is it good for? Well, it helps you to avoid the non-specific priming while keeping the specific why is that? Well, that's because at the high temperature, maybe you are, for a couple of cycles you're not amplifying anything because the primers wouldn't bind. But then at some point the temperature will be low enough to allow the specific binding. But it will still not be sufficient for the non-specific binding of primers to non-perfect templates. And that will give the specifically primed reaction a head start. You start amplifying that, you double it with each cycle, and only much later the non-specific binding might still occur. But at that time you have already accumulated a lot of the specific PCR product and this will now outcompete the non-specifically primed product. And that's why the touchdown PCR protocol is such a successful protocol without having to optimize the annealing temperature for every PCR that you're doing, you can still hit it by the touchdown because at some point during the lowering of the temperatures you will hit it just the right temperature and you will get it just right in order to make your specific primers bind 
but not the non-specific binding to occur. So much for the touchdown. And in the last chapter, I'll be telling you about an entirely different problem that we can also face during uh, PCR troubleshooting. See you then. Thank you.